We'll now look at nested quantifiers. So what these means is using more than one quantifier at once, like this example here, which basically says for any two numbers x and y, xy is equal to yx. So this is just the commutative rule of multiplication, and this is the logical way to write it. So we'll look at a few more examples as well. This one, for any number x, there is a number y such that x plus y is equal to zero. So our last example said that we could pick any two numbers and it would work. This one says we can pick any number for x and then there should be a number y that also works. Let's look at trying to translate this one to English. For all x and for all y, x greater than, z greater than zero and y less than zero implies xy is less than zero. So if we want to translate this to English, we can do this several ways. However, we're going to try to do the most concise way. We're going to start with the fact that for all x, x needs to be greater than zero. So this is saying all positive numbers. The next part says that y has to be less than zero, and it's true for all y less than zero, which means that we're going to be looking at all negative numbers. Finally, the last part, xy is less than zero, says that their product is negative. Another way we could have said this is the product of a positive and a negative number is negative, which would be a little more concise, but it may not be immediately evident that the, that is what this is saying. So now let's try to determine true or false. We're going to let q of xy be equal to x plus y equal to 5. So we're going to start with that there exists a y for all x, q of xy. So this says there is a unique number y that works for all numbers x. And that can't be true because we can find lots of counterexamples. The idea is we want to start with the first logical operator, which is that there exists. So we want to pick a single value for y, and then we should say that it doesn't matter what number I pick for x, I can add it to this number, and you get 5. Well, that's just false, because for instance, if I picked 2 for y, well, this isn't true if x is equal to 1, or 2, or 4, or negative 20, etc. The second one, for all x there exists a y, this one is going to be true because this says for any value that I pick for x, I can also find a y that I can add and get 5, which would be true since if you give me a value for x, I can specifically pinpoint an exact number for y that would work here. Another example, this time we have q of xyz equal to xy is equal to z. So the first one, for all x and for all y, there exists a z such that q of x, y, z. So this says we're going to pick any number for x and any number for y. There should be a number z that works. And that should be true. No matter what numbers you pick for x and y, you can find a product. The next one, there exists a z, so I'm going to pick z first. So let's say z is 7. Well, then it should work for all x and for all y. So I should say x is equal to, I can pick any number for x and any number for y, but that's just not true. So this would be false. We can also negate these. Whenever I try to negate something, I'm going to change all of the quantifiers. So if I try to negate, the for all changes to a there exist, the there exists changes to a for all, and then we negate the predicate, which in this case would say x, y is not equal to 2. Another one here, negating the there exist would be a for all x. Negating for all is a there exist. Here we can't necessarily negate the predicate easily, so we just write the negation of p of x, y. An and negates to an or. The for all becomes a there exist, and then we have this negation of q. 
of x, y, z.